everyone, it's John and welcome to another edition of Cozy, Charming, Crazy Real Estate where we talk about everything real estate. In this, our final edition of 2021, we're going to share some tips of what you can do as a homeowner and home seller if you intend to sell in 2022 to help prepare your home to show the best it can at an open house. Now, these are things not that your agent can do, but that you can do either the day before or the day of your open house to make that home shine. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, we're going to assume that you've already done the things that you have uh, reviewed with your agent to make the house ready to go on the market. And you've done the repairs, you've painted uh, colors that should be brought back to neutral, back to neutral colors. You've done all that. Now you're just getting ready to sh have people come through so you can show the house uh, face to face. So the first thing that we recommend you do is have a thorough cleaning. Now, whether you do it yourself or you bring in a service, we know that homes that uh, show the best are often shiny. Uh, the mirrors, the countertops, the sinks, everything's been wiped down clean, spotless, and very shiny. So you want to make sure you do a thorough cleaning. Now, the next thing you want to do outside is make sure that the lawn has been serviced. Also, any trees that need to be trimmed, shrubberies, etc. cetera. Uh, you want to do that either the morning of or the day before the open house. Now, it is my preference to mow the lawn just an hour or two before the open house because that smell of fresh cut grass is a positive uh, that uh, visitors to the home will, will smell as they come in and it gets them kind of off on the right um, uh, foot as they uh, walk up the path, the positive vibe of that fresh cut grass. So make sure that the outside is very well uh, groomed. Also, if you have a driveway and a sidewalk, uh, and especially if you have trees that have uh, seed pods and other things that fall on uh, the sidewalk and driveway, make sure that they're swept off, cleaned off. If you have to, hose them off uh, so that you don't uh, have anyone tracking stuff inside that they picked up on your driveway or your uh, walkway. Clear the counters in all your rooms to the extent that you can. In the kitchen, I recommend putting away all large appliances, anything that uh, takes up space and makes the uh, countertops and the room look smaller. Now, it doesn't mean you can't have a salt and pepper shaker, maybe a, uh, a small vase with two or three stems of roses in it to bring out a nice little bit of color in the kitchen. Uh, that's okay, but you want to unclutter it for a couple reasons. One, to make the room look bigger, but also if you have a premium surface like a very nice uh, butcher block or a nice stone countertop, you want to be able to show those off. You can't show them off if they have a lot of stuff on them. The other thing you want to do to declutter is remove all the vehicles from the property. Uh, if you have two cars, you have a two-car garage, you're going to put the family in one and drive away during the open house and plan on leaving the other car, I recommend you don't. Move that other car, uh, ask a neighbor if you can use their driveway or somehow uh, move it off the property. You wanna show off the size of that two car garage to potential buyers. If you have a space where a uh, recreational vehicle or a boat on a trailer is regularly parked, you wanna show off that space too, so the same logic applies. Get the boat, get the RV also off the property. Uh, the space where they park will show better without them there. If you want to, consider adding temporary color to your yard. And by this, I mean potted plants that you might put out, uh, let's say in front, that look kind of inviting. You wouldn't normally have them there, but they're kind of decorative for the open house. You can always put them in the backyard or put them in the garage because you intend to take them with you to your new home. But just if you can add a little temporary color, consider doing that. Now, if you have pets, you want to take those off site with you. Now, if it's obviously a fish or a turtle that you have in a tank, uh, you can go ahead and leave them there. But if you have a cat, you have a dog, 
uh, recommend not leaving a dog in a dog run or locking them up in the garage. Take them off site because you want uh, open house visitors to be able to see the entire property. Uh, last thing you want to do, well, two last things. One is make sure if you haven't done it already, depersonalize the home. That is uh, something that we recommend you do uh, before the home goes on the market. By depersonalize, we recommend that you remove religious and family items from the walls and other uh, places where they might be. And the reason we recommend this is uh, when people come in, you don't want to have a barrier up that uh, gets in between them and them imagining uh, that they might live there. And it has been found through various studies that uh, some people visiting a home, whether it's at an open house or a scheduled appointment, if they see a lot of personal family stuff, they kind of feel like they're intruding or it, it impedes them thinking them of themselves living there. So uh, we do recommend before we start taking pictures when we list a property, remove those items, put them in a moving box so you can put them up in your new home when you move. Uh, but if you haven't done that, if you have, let's say, some small frame photographs that you have on the uh, fireplace mantle, uh, that are not nailed in the wall, they're just sitting there with a little pop-up stand, uh, go ahead and put those in a nice box and put them away during the open house. And finally, if you have a home that has a photo opportunity in it, whether it's a very nice built-in, like a desk or a bookshelf, or it's a view, maybe you have a golf course, the ocean, whatever, uh, you want to make sure that during the open house that view is showcased. And there's a couple of ways you can do it. One is to just, of course, to uh, put a sign up that says, hey, look at this beautiful view. The other thing, which I like to do, is to put a camera on a tripod and have it there. And I try to capture photographs of open house visitors enjoying the view. And uh, I will get their email address and send them a photograph that uh, is of the quality that they could actually put it on their Christmas cards if they wanted to. But most importantly, we want them to think of themselves enjoying that beautiful view or that photo op type of uh, feature in the home. So it's sent as a sales support uh, activity. So those are the items that we recommend in summary. Make sure the home is clean. Make sure that you removed any clutter inside or out. Uh, you want to make sure that the outside uh, yard maintenance is taken care of. And you want to make sure the home is depersonalized and decluttered and ready to show. And finally, that any photo opportunities or featured items within the home are not obstructed in any way. And they are definitely showcased during the open house. I hope if you enjoyed this video, you will hit like. And if you have any additions, things that uh, you've done before that can help others uh, to prepare for the open house, please make a comment below. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. And remember, we will be back in January of 2022 with more editions of Cozy, Charming, Crazy Real Estate. So please subscribe, hit the bell so you'll be notified, and have a wonderful end of the year holiday season. And we will see you in January on cozy, charming, crazy real estate. Bye.